Hello and welcome back to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel, your source for all things Everton. My name is Thomas and we are back on the channel today with another Football Manager 2021 simulation. After a lot of weeks of speculation, Raf Benitez has finally taken charge of Everton. He started pre-season now just about a week into that, so we've placed him in charge of Football Manager obviously a year back. Uh, everything is updated, the Premier League's updated with the new teams like Norwich and Brentford, so we're going to simulate how he's going to get on this season. Uh, we'll definitely see what kind of staff that he might hire, obviously at the moment uh, it only seems to be Duncan Ferguson at the time of recording what transfers he might make the tactics that he might make and we'll see how Everton plays come the end of the season the media prediction there does say that we are predicted to finish ninth with the current group of players that we do have and we will now simulate it we'll go forward to January as we always do see what transfers we made see what results we can get until the January transfer window and then see again where we might come at the end of the season then we'll see if we can progress from there We've seen so many times on these simulations that sometimes the managers we place in charge, like Wayne Rooney, they don't even make it past the first season. I'm hoping that <laughs> Rafa will. Let's see if he can extend that stay longer than some of the previous simulations. So we're going to give it a try and we'll see where we get to. And now let us simulate until January. Right then, hello and welcome back. As you can see in the top right there, it is now the 1st of January 2021. We've simulated half of the season and as you can already see on your screens, Everton find themselves in 5th place. Uh, after 16 games, 9 wins, 4 losses and 3 draws with a goal difference of 9. 31 points, currently level with 4th placed Arsenal. Uh, just missing out on goal difference, so we're going to delve into all the transfers that Rafa might have made. The tactics he's used, and as you can see already, some interesting things you can see on your screen here. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, currently joined top score with Raul Jimenez and Raheem Sterling after half season, and which is really to see. And then something else which is quite interesting, obviously this save starts... Uh, just after the expiry of Lionel Messi's contract at Barcelona. And for some reason, the game has simulated that he moved to Liverpool, something that definitely none of us want to see. Uh, we won't be dwelling on that for too long, but just an interesting fact there, uh, as the game has decided to simulate that after his expiry uh, with uh, with Barcelona. Sorry, So we'll go straight into the transfers to start off with. Obviously, these are all going to uh, remain the same uh, at the start of the year, but there will be a couple of... Of additions, I'd imagine, starting here, Raul Moro from Lazio uh, for £900,000, clearly a future prospect. Uh, interesting that Everton have signed him, made an appearance in the Carabao Cup, uh, not picking up any goals or assists, but wanted by quite a few teams on loans. Plays on the right wing, which is, of course, uh, an obvious target for Everton this summer. Elsewhere, Alex Vidal has joined. He's formerly of Sevilla, Barcelona, can play anywhere along that right flank. So it's it's clear already that in the simulation and in real life, Everton are target, targeting, strengthening that right-hand side. Uh, 31 years old, so clearly not one for the future, but he's come in uh, on a free transfer, made quite a few sub-appearances, one goal, one assist, nothing too significant, but clearly adding depth to the right wing and right back. Uh, Sergio Escudero there, uh, making five appearances at left back, clearly the club decided uh, that they needed a bit more depth there, and maybe Niels Nkunku wasn't the logical replacement, so he came in on a free transfer as well. Not a bad season so far, making five appearances. Clearly not the favoured left back, but is coming in when Lucas Dinier maybe is unfit or picks up an injury. A couple of good stats there, so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. Uh, yet another free transfer as well, Ethan Horvath. Uh, he came in on a free transfer from Club Bruges. Uh, more uh, depth at the goalkeeper position. Obviously, Robin Olsen at this point has left the club. He was on loan last season. Clearly, the club have opted against signing him here, so he came in. To provide that depth, depth to John Pickford, he's made three appearances at the Carabao Cup, done very well there, and just one appearance in the Premier League, finishing with an average rating of 7.2, so he's clearly proved himself to be an apt replacement for Pickford when he's needed. And uh, that brings us to the end of the transfers in. We can take a quick look of transfers out by the looks of it. Uh, there isn't anything particularly significant, nothing that we didn't already know. Niels and Kunku there, he went out on loan to Burton Albion, so maybe that's why they brought an Escudero, looking to get him more first-team football as he waits for Lucas Digne to, to progress his career and he can break in. Uh, having a pretty average season in League One with a 6.93 average rating, did well in the FA Cup, picking up a 7.9 average rating over two games, so pretty decent there. Clearly their star on left back, and it'll be interesting to see how he progresses this season. Others, Anthony Gorn went on loan to Oxford United. Obviously, had a fairly mixed spell with Preston last season in real life, but he's gone. Uh, he's gone a step down. So to League One, he's doing very well there. Average rating of seven, picking up four goals and an assist. Other than that, Nathan Broadhead, who's obviously has just signed a new contract with the club, he moved to Sheffield Wednesday. Lewis Gibson went to MK Dons, and Benny Banning Gimme went to Carlisle on loan. So let's take a quick look at the tactics. 
Jordan Pickford there starting in goal. He's clearly the favourite goalkeeper. Brilliant, brilliant tournament with England, which is criminally underrated, but well done to him. Vidal uh, starting at right back, it seems. He seems there's, there's going to be quite a bit of rotation, uh, with Seamus Coleman being the favoured one, but he's picking up injuries, as you can see. Uh, ben Godfrey and Mason Holgate are the defensive partnership currently, but it seems like uh, th there's, again, a lot of rotation there. Yeri Mina uh, making seven appearances, Michael Keane making 14, uh, and Godfrey and Holgate. So it'll be, it'll be, it will be interesting to see which defensive partnership Rafa looks to use uh, this season. Escudero there at left-back, it must be, uh, because Luca Digne, is a, he was clearly injured or he's been rested. He's clearly the starting left back. He goes for a 4 2 3 1 with Alan and Decore in the midfield. Clearly his favourite central midfield partnership. Richardson off the left. Interestingly, uh, Moise Keane featuring off the right. There's a lot of debate about what his future will hold. He was obviously on loan at PSG last season. Seems like Rafa Benitez isn't interested on loaning him out again. If any move is going to be made, it is likely to be permanent. So on the, the games, Keane seem to think he's going to stay at Everton, but maybe not. Uh, he's sorry, he's maybe not the starting right forward. Obviously, with only four appearances, James Rodriguez there on the bench. So maybe. It will be goes further out wide, and as we already know, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, uh, 20 appearances, 12 goals already this season. He is doing very well, uh, and as you can see just on the bench there, Ellis Sims, he's actually uh, he's in the first-team squad, he's amongst the first-team squad, only making one first-team appearance uh, from the bench, but still doing well either way. Take a quick look at the schedule now. Uh, started the season very strongly uh, against the likes of uh, Aston Villa and then beating Rotherham in the Cup but then probably two couple of disappointing draws there against Brighton and Leeds progressing in the Carabao Cup nonetheless losing against Chelsea at home uh, before beating Burnley and Southampton before losing at Manchester United then a home draw with Arsenal followed uh, then five back-to-back -back wins against Watford, West Ham, Newcastle, Norwich and Leicester City a draw with Crystal Palace brought that win streak to an end before beating Chelsea in the Carabao Cup quarterfinal on penalties. A loss against Wolves and a win against Tottenham brings us to January 2021. As you can see there, Manchester City and then Preston North End in the Carabao Cup semi-final. So that's a fantastic opportunity to make the final if they do uh, if they do progress. So uh, thank you very much for watching so far. We're going to simulate to the end of the season, see if Everton can keep up this good form, as I mentioned, fifth in the Premier League into a Carabao Cup semi-final against Championship Preston North End. Let's hope they can keep up the good work and bring, uh, we will bring you that uh, in just a moment. Okay then, welcome back. We have not quite skipped to the end of the season because Everton did beat Preston North End in the semi-final. They have progressed into the Carabao Cup final against Manchester United here on the 25th of April. Just before we're going to get into this match, as you can see, Everton are currently placed fourth in the Premier League without any further signings in the January transfer window. Uh, after well, since we last met, pretty mixed form in January, picking up a couple of a couple of good wins, but disappointing losses against Leeds, uh, draw against Brighton, being beaten by Chelsea, uh, then against obviously Carabao Cup final opponent Manchester United in the league before a brilliant win run of seven games, beating Stoke City in the quarter final before being knocked out in the semi final against Liverpool with Messi there scoring in the fifth minute. However, unlikely that is. Losing against Norwich in the match prior to this, but it is now the 25th of April. It means now it is time for the Carabao Cup final. So, with six games to go, Everton are placed in fourth with the potential of Champions League football and could potentially bring home a trophy here. So, we're going to get into the match now. I'm going to talk you through the main highlights. Let us hope that Everton could bring home a trophy in their first season under Rafa Benitez. That would definitely be uh, one way to get the fans on board. And as you can see in this simulation so far, he has started brilliantly. So we are going to get into this now. I'm going to bring you the various highlights throughout the match. And let us hope uh, that Everton can bring this home. So stick with us as we do go through the various highlights in this match. As you can see here in the 20th minute, nothing too much to say so far. Manchester United dominating the ball, but Everton creating the same amount of chances, clearly playing that counter-attacking style with the team there, as you can see, with James Rodriguez playing centrally and a will be off the right, as we thought it might have been. Richardson currently the best player with an average rating of 7.0, creating the best chances, as you can see there, an XG of 0.6, but approaching half-time and now at half-time. No one scored yet. There's been no significant chances enough to bring you a highlight, but... Everton with less of the ball, create more chances, so we'll have to see how this second half does develop. Straight away here with a highlight at half-time. 
Everton starting this half playing all the way back to Jordan Pickford uh, he's going to look to play it back forwards to Ben Godfrey good possession here from Everton especially in the central of midfield back to Michael Keane Decore now has the ball he's going to switch it out wide to Digne really good uh, possession here from Everton good positive possession progressive forwards Allen with a brilliant ball out to Digne he's probably going to look to put a cross in and he does to Calvert-Lewin but it is narrowly just above the bar in the top left corner and Everton will have to wait for that first goal now into the 61st minute here, Hamas Rodriguez has a corner into Calvert-Lewin and again just grazing the top of the bar, Everton creating the best chances here, especially from crossing the ball from out wide into Calvert-Lewin, probably why he's had so much success this season, but still not finding that breakthrough with the higher XG of about one already and the possession starting to even itself out as well. Here at Manchester United have a corner though, they're going to try and whip that one in, Rashford picks it up on the edge of the box, what's he going to try and do with it, drives out wide, is he going to look to put a ball in, he does into Enzo Cavani who just about hits the post, great chance for Manchester United there but Cavani could not convert it. Everton now again with this Hamas Rodriguez free kick out wide, he's going to put a ball in, Michael Keane finds it at the back post, taps it in in the 81st minute and Everton take the lead in the Carabao Cup final through Michael Keane it was a brilliant set piece to the back corner headed back across uh, by Alex Wilby I believe that is and Keane couldn't miss from there uh, fantastic play from Everton and now they will look out to see uh, they will look to see out the game in the final 10 minutes as you can see here with time progressing it seems like Everton are doing well another Hammers Rodriguez corner out uh, free kick out wide sorry cleared by Rashford but only to Alex Wilby who is fouled by Scott McTominay looks like that will be a red card with five minutes of had a time to go Manchester United are down to 10 men and it looks as though Everton will see this out to pick up the Carabao Cup in Rafa Benitez's first season in charge of Everton now that is definitely going to be one way that Rafa could win over the the fans that, that, that do doubt him or didn't want him as manager bringing home silverware in the first season and that's a fantastic start so we're now going to simulate to the end of the uh, Premier League season with only five games to go hopefully Everton can see it through secure Champions League football uh, with, a, with a fairly decent run of fixes left but Liverpool on the final day it will be interesting to see how decisive that may be so as you can see here the fixtures Wolves Manchester City Tottenham Brentford and Liverpool it is going to be an interesting one to see if they can push this one through uh, with United and uh, with City and Liverpool sorry already securing that football Spurs only one point behind Arsenal only three points behind it's going to be an interesting battle so we're going to bring it to you in just a moment Hello and welcome back. As you can see on your screens, quite disappointingly, Everton have somewhat capitulated towards the end of the season, picking up a loss against Wolves, Manchester City and Liverpool. Only four points in the final month has made them slip out of the top four all the way down to six. Very disappointing. Uh, finished three points off of Champions League football, obviously with that goal difference. So if they would have picked up that win against Wolves maybe picked up just, just one more point or uh, against Tottenham, maybe if, they, if they'd won that match with Lucas Moura, they're equalising in the 87th minute. Absolute heartbreak, Sadio Mane there, equalize, uh, uh, sorry, getting the winner in the 86th minute. A lot of last-minute football that has cost Everton Champions League football in Rafa Benitez's first season. But this pretty much brings us to the end of the video. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you weren't a fan of Rafa Benitez before, it was a top four push, didn't quite get it. He got European football after a pretty disappointing final five games with two last minute equalisers or winners that have put them out of the Champions League. That really would have made the difference. Other than that, with a trophy, that, that, I mean, that is one way to get the fans on board with that Carabao Cup success uh, against Manchester United and the semi final losing to Liverpool quite narrowly. So thank you all very much for watching. Be sure to let us know if you want to get more videos like this in the months to come, uh, just before the start of the Premier League season, before we can bring you uh, more match day content back. Uh, Dominic Cavalloon, as you can see there, didn't feature inside the top scorers. Uh, dropping oh no sorry he sorry he did he finished joint second actually on 17 goals so a brilliant season from them a pretty decent season from Everton they don't they did get fairly unlucky towards the end of the year but that is football so thank you all very much for watching be sure to let us know uh, your thoughts in the comments below would you be happy with this as Rafa Benitez's first season and would you be on board if you were not before so as I mentioned thank you very much for watching and join us next time on the Toffee Blues. Everton! 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 Everton!